They got speed, style, and performance. And I know we've all thought about buying one. That's right, I'm talking about sports cars. We've got seven tire squealing deals that will give you some serious clout. Just uh, don't tell anybody that you found them for under 10K. So for all the newbies out there, smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and get ready for some manual transmissions and enough horsepower to make the Amish blush. Are you ready? Cause I am. Let's go. We gotta thank Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Because here's the thing, two out of every three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. And you know what the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still got it. You used to have to go to your doctor for your hair loss prescription but not no more. Because now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit your doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your door. They make it super easy and they'll deliver your medication every three months so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and weird doctor visits. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why over 100,000 men have already trusted Keeps with their hair loss prevention medication. So if you notice your hair's thinning a little bit, do something about it because it usually takes four to six months to start seeing results so the sooner you take care of it the more hair you're gonna save go to keeps.com slash ideal or just click the link down in the description to get your special offer for hair loss treatment that's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash ideal now back to the show now real quick guys, if you wanna be the cool kid on the block, go snag one of these Let's Go limited edition hand-drawn tees up here. I'm telling you, it adds five horsepower to any ride on this list. And the first one is a doozy. It's the G37, which is probably one of the most rowdy yet reliable cars available for cheap on today's market. And this thing has one of my favorite power plants. Yeah, it's that boisterous 3.7 liter V6 making trumpet sounds all day and all night. <laughs> And that beautiful melody will annoy both your neighbors and let you drift parking lots simultaneously. And the power output on this puppy is nothing to laugh at. You got a 328 horsepower piston pusher, which is officially known as the VQ37 VHR, or VVL for short. I'm not that short. And you know what? This thing gets the G37 to highway speeds in just 5.3 seconds. And you know what? That's a 10th faster than a 2012 Dodge Charger police car, in case any of you guys were wondering, but the true beauty of Infiniti's VVEL engine lies in its reliability. Because as long as you do regular oil changes and service it in the recommended service intervals, you're in for a treat. 300 plus horsepower from a naturally aspirated V6 that won't leave you stranded. Now that to me is an ideal car. Now, if you're like me and you've never heard of self-healing paint, then be amazed because all 2009 to 11 model year G37s came standard with scratch shield. How well it works though is a point of great contention. And here's the deal, it didn't work out that well for Infinity because a lot of their paint in those model years is actually pretty poor quality and it didn't work out as well as well, they said it would. But bodywork aside, G37s have a ton of sportsy options. You want a manual transmission? Of course you do. Check that box. How about all wheel drive? Yeah, they got that too, which is a ton of fun in the white stuff. On top of that, there's a sports package and you get larger rotors and calipers on each corner, which is actually something that you want because it's a pretty hefty piggy coming in at 3,710 pounds. And yes, the G37, for all you guys wondering, does come with an automatic transmission, just in case you don't want to party. So if you're like me, then you're pretty sold on the G37. And this 08 G37 Sport is looking just right in your garage or carport or probably street parking if you're, if you're like me. But for only 7,800 bucks for this manual 330 horsepower Japanese Canyon Carver with more than good enough looks, I think that might be the ideal deal. But if you want something that's comparable and speaks Z German, up next is one of my favorite all time cars to drive. And it's no secret, it's a Porsche, or is it Porsche? No, it's it's Porsche. I should know, because I think I own one, or, or two. Yeah, I might have a problem, but like, 
Let's keep that to ourselves, okay? But for roughly half the price of a 996 Carrera, you know, the ones that have those fried headlights, this Porsche is more than half as good. This puppy has the engine in the middle, which is exactly where God intended it to be. And so you know what that means? When this 986 Boxster left Stuttgart, it had perfect 50-50 weight distribution. And that means this thing was ready to rock and roll. And with one glance at the interior, not only did it look plush, but there were no rear seats. So that means that Porsche was focused on one thing and one thing only, the driver. Well, you could be one too. And when the top goes down, the fun goes up. And this Apex Killer is an incredibly fun car to drive at the limit. And when you start it in true Porsche fashion with your left hand, yeah, let us know in the comments, have you ever started a car with your left hand before? Because turn the key and that flat six comes to life. Oh boy, does it ever sound so good. However, you do get to choose which flavor of flat six you want. Because with the 986 Boxster, you could get 201 horses from the 2.5 liter in the pre-2000 models. And then in post-2000, power and displacement increased to 217 and 2.7 liters respectively. And for the hardcore 986 lover that wants the ultimate driving experience, because there is no substitute, See what I did there? There even is an S version for you. Yeah, this baby comes with the 3.2 liter and 258 blistering horsepower. And the Boxster S will zip to 60 in 5.3 seconds, which is quite a bit quicker than the pre-2000 model with the 2.5 liter. But that's no slouch either. And actually it probably is the ideal deal. And it is an excellent first Porsche. And here it is, ladies and gents, a 97 Porsche Boxster with over 200 horse, weighing in at 2,756 pounds and costs only seven grand. At the very least, I would totally encourage a test drive in one of these budget beauties. It's just the passion for driving that they inspire. And they really let you know that you're driving something truly special. I mean, after all, it's a Porsche. It's what every other manufacturer compares themselves to. And the next car, is exactly one of those rides, except it attracts a different sort of crowd. The Fixer Repair Daily Mustang GT is a lot less concerned about suspension geometries and it shows, but <laughs> it's got a V8. <laughs> With a cult-like following around the globe, the Ford Mustang remains one of the most iconic cars ever built. And I think we all love that aggressive American styling, that five liter V8, and all the clout that it brings. Besides its abysmal gas mileage and its sketchy cars and coffee reputation, the Mustang GT is an incredible sports car. And that's actually for multiple reasons. First, let's start with the engine. The 2005 to 10 model year GTs came with the 4.6 liter V8, which has 300 horse and 320 foot pounds of torque. And that was good for zero to 60 in five seconds. Not too shabby, but then Ford did something right. They put in the Coyote motor in 2011. And that five liter put out a 412 wild Mustangs and 380 foot pounds of torque. And that beast of a power plant pushed this thing from zero to 60 in 4.8 exciting seconds. And the one thing that I think we all know about the Mustang GT is that it can rip donuts faster than your local sheriff. But it also gets pretty good gas mileage on the freeway. But there's one thing that as a Mustang driver, you should be wary of, those pesky little corners. Although Ford did do some R&D in developing the S197 suspension. In fact, it's the first Mustang with McPherson strut front suspension and semi-independent rear axle. Essentially, it was a step in the right direction, but it still wasn't perfect. But hey, that's what the aftermarket's for, right? So whether you want an autocross monster, a quarter mile specialist, or just something with some chromed out vents, there's an S197 Mustang out there for you. And yeah, this 08 doesn't have the Coyote V8, but it's only got 40,000 miles. And it's a blank canvas for whatever parts you want to throw on it. And did I mention it's only nine grand? Shh anybody. One of you should go buy this thing. And whichever one of you does, buy your ideal car like a pro and use the ideal car strategies. And while the Mustang GT is prone to oversteer, at the slightest blip of the throttle, our next car has two more doors, all wheel drive, and the three hottest letters at the rally stage. I think you're picking up what I'm throwing down, the WRX. Whether you recognize the WRX from the World Rally Racing Championships or from your local car meet, one thing's obvious. This platform is capable of just about anything. Thing. Plus you can find a second or third gen for under 10 K. 
10K. As you know from this video, fun all-wheel drive cars for under 10K, the Hawkeye is my answer. And that's probably because it's aggressive and sleek, and that 235 horsepower EJ25 launches you to 60 in just 5.2 seconds. And so yeah, that would be my ideal choice on this list, except it's really tough to find one for under 10K. But thankfully, there's the older gen that actually is just as good, known as the Bug Eye model, which is slightly less desirable, and the EJ20 produces 227 horses, and zero to 60 comes in a little longer longer 5.6 seconds, but here's the thing, it's just as much fun to drive. And here's a bug eye going for under 10K, with that bright in your face red paint, five speed manual, and all wheel drive. Now, I'm not gonna leave you hanging, because I did mention that you could get a third gen for under 10K as well. And the EJ25 is largely unchanged from its previous generation, except it does have slightly better throttle response and greater low end torque. And yet, it still produces the same 235 horsepower, but with just a little bit more precision. However, precision, can't defeat physics. I learned that the hard way once or twice. And since the third gen weighs almost 100 pounds more than the second gen, it accelerates to 60 in 5.7 seconds. So a half a second slower than its predecessor? Subi, you're, you're moving in the wrong direction. Still, it's reassuring to know that most of the weight actually comes from new safety technology. And you also get a little bit more interior space, which makes this gen WRX a little bit more practical. So if you're ready to pull the trigger on a third gen, here's this 09 wagon with just over 100 K and a five speed manual for 9,500 bucks. And if you want something that had twice the MSRP of that third gen WRX, but you can still find for under 10 K today, let me show you to the BMW 335i. But first, let me take you back to 2007, when brand new, the MSRP of the E92 335i was $40,600. So if you wanna look like a baller, well, you can. This ultimate driving machine does zero to 60 in just under five seconds, but it comes with a catch. There are two very different routes to take with this car. One is to get a completely stock daily, which if you ask me is, is kind of boring and life shouldn't be boring. So you could take the second route by a heavily modded example with a single turb ski. <laughs> Oh, baby. But with that thing, it might put your bank account in a world of hurt because it'll be torching both oxygen sensors and your life savings. So you think you're safe with stock? Think again, because even completely stock 335Is have a lot of problems. High pressure fuel pumps, charge pipes, and injectors are just a few of the common parts that experience failures. But besides the problematic power plant, both the E90 and E92 chassis are dreamy and they give a ton of meaningful feedback to the driver when pushed. And if you're idea of spirited driving involves snow, an X-Drive is less likely to get stuck and is just as much fun. Now, the N54 motors found in these cars has been called the modern 2JZ and for very good reason. See, when stock, the N54 makes 300 horsepower, which is nothing to sneeze at, but you can have a lot more fun with these things. See, all you gotta do is swap those two tiny turbos with one big old single turbo and now you've got 600 100 horsepower. Of course, now you need proper fueling, ignition, and tuning, but when it's completed, it's a blast to drive. And if you wanna try your luck with this German 2JZ, then I don't blame you. Here's this $9,000 E90 that's got your name all over it. The 335i has a great chassis and an engine with incredible potential. It's just let down by its reliability. But luckily, our next car will spend much less time at the mechanic and way more time on the road, which is kind of where you want to be. And when you want both efficiency and affordability, Japan is always the answer. The Acura RSX Type S is quicker than you might think, and it's also affordable to purchase and maintain. No matter how much money you have stashed in your bank account, trust me, it never hurts to have at least one affordable and reliable vehicle in the garage. I should really take that to heart. <laughs> and that affordable and reliable car that takes up that spot doesn't have to be lightning quick, but it wouldn't hurt. And I think it's gotta be something that you'd be okay with street parking. And it might save you a little bit of dough at the pump. Okay, enough figurative speech. How does the RSX Type S actually stack up? Well, pretty good actually. See, the Type S uses a two liter inline four producing 200 horse and 142 foot pounds of torque to the front wheels. Did somebody say VTEC? <laughs> I think you heard right, because that high revving VTEC motor called the K20A2 pulls you to highway speeds in a casual 6.2 seconds. But it will do that all day, 
every day. And it's gonna sip gas while doing it, saving you money. And when you opted for the six-speed manual transmission, which you should, you'd get at least 24 miles per gallon in the city and 31 on the highway. And that's with no fancy cylinder deactivation, just good old-fashioned efficiency. And from the outside, the RSX looks fast, but from the inside, not so much. Besides the standard leather seats, much of the interior of the Type S was carried over from the base RSX. But it's these cost-saving measures that allows you to get into it for under 10 grand. And once you do, there's only a few minor issues that you gotta watch out for. And the first, with any Japanese cars, ricer mods. Yes, there's quite a few of these out there that should be arrested by the taste police, but it's nothing that you can't change once you buy it. And the second thing is the troublesome synchros. Yeah, they had some issues shifting between second and third gear, and there might be a little bit of grinding. But other than that, the RSX Type S is pretty much bulletproof. And for 7,200 bucks, who could say no to this sporty Econobox? Just freshly broken in with 117,000 miles and a six-speed manual at your fingertips, I'm sure you could take this thing to 300K and above, no problem. And if you wanna stick with trendy two-door sports cars for under 10K, this next one is also a golden ticket. It's one of the most stylish cars to ever leave the Korean factory. You know, the Korean factory factory Hyundai. It rhymes with Sunday. At least that's how I always remember it. And yes, the Genesis Coupe has a turbo, it's got rear wheel drive, and you guessed it, it's got a six-speed manual tranny. And this car comes from the company that's usually praised for its five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. And this Genesis completely redefined the brand. And it also completely changed what it meant to own a Korean sports car. Built on the same platform as the Genesis sedan, the Coupe is a beautiful elongated shape with just two doors. And this car was designed to directly compete with the first car from this list, the G37. And I think if you close one eye and squint with the other, you can see a few similarities. And although the reliability and style were there, it also needed performance. Yeah, and luckily there were two different options. One was the two liter turbo, which pumped out 274 horsepower. Or if you're a little bit more of an NA guy like myself, you could opt for the 3.8 liter V6, spitting out 348 horses. And the best part is that you could get a six speed manual with either engine choice. And if you're looking for the fastest Genesis stock, you gotta pick the 3.8 because it will launch to 60 in 5.2 seconds, where the two liter turbo lagged about six tenths behind that, which is still no slouch either, but it does have a lot more aftermarket tuning potential. And can they handle corners, you ask? Yes, they can, except somewhat slowly and with a lot of understeer. And that's mainly due to it not having perfect weight distribution, and it's a pretty stiff chassis. So it's hard to get the most out of it in a safe manner, which for a sports car, isn't that ideal. And another pitfall of the BK Genesis might come as a shock. It's less reliable than you think. And now with all of them being out of warranty, it actually isn't the cheapest one to maintain on this list. Yeah, most issues are minor, but with a semi-fragile build quality, things quickly add up. But hey, at least parts are cheap. And if you're still digging this coupe, we found a 2011 two liter turbo with a six speed manual for only 7,500 bucks. And if you could pick any of these sports cars on this list, which one would you choose and why? Let us know down below. Would you snag the trusty G37, BMW's Lunar Rocket, or maybe the front wheel drive Acura was more your jam? And I bet you can already guess my favorite ideal car on this list, the 986 Boxster, or as I like to say, box turd, but it's a shiny turd because it's lightweight, it inspires confidence, and it's easily more than half as good as a 996-911. Plus, I like the fact that there isn't a back seat because, well, I don't have to drive a bunch of other people around, which is food for thought. And I think a 986 Boxster would look really good next to my 997 and 996-911. What do you think? And also, if you guys haven't checked out our Instagram page yet, go check out at Ideal Media Official. We update it every single day, and you can stay in the know of what's going on here at Ideal. And if you're new here, my name is Brad Danger. This is Ideal Media. Please hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Also, if you enjoyed the vid, hit the like button. And if you disliked, hit the dislike not once, but twice. And also check out some of our other Ideal content. And as always, keep living the Ideal lifestyle.